Hi, today I want to talk about the scientific methods that scientists use to gather information about the world around them. Notice that we're saying methods and not the method. There is no one method, right? So here on the slide you can see there's a gentleman digging around in the uh, dirt trying to dig up some fossils or maybe growing plants to see which nutrients affect plant growth, this woman over here, um, or perhaps in a lab c collecting data on, you know, people with certain diseases or trying to identify a new a new microbe uh, that might be causing problems in the environment. So regardless, all these um, investigations require some observations, some background information, right? Scientists aren't just guessing about things. They know things based on some observations that they've made, okay? And then based on those observations, they usually pose a question. Why is this happening? What's the reason for this? And then based on that, they answer that question with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is just a testable statement. That hypothesis then also leads to a prediction whereby they can say, if something happens, then, or if I do something, then there will be a result. And they can actually test that in an experiment. And we're going to be in biology class this year looking at a lot of different experiments where you create a hypothesis and then test it and see if you can support that hypothesis or maybe you don't support that hypothesis. Okay, So that's the next step is developing a test and then going back to see if we can confirm or not confirm the hypothesis. Okay, uh, So in, in <clears throat> hypothesis we said is generally you may have heard it as an educated guess. We don't really want to say it's a guess, right? We want to say it's a testable explanation for a question or problem. And it's based on some background information that we have. We're not just randomly guessing about things. So when you create a hypothesis in biology class, you're going to use an if-then-because statement. If we test flowers with a certain nutrient, then plants with nitrogen will grow faster, taller, because nitrogen is a valuable nutrient needed by plants. So you're not just saying, if then, I'm guessing, you're actually justifying that with an explanation. You're justifying your prediction. Okay. So when we uh, set up a hypothesis, there are variables that are going to affect the outcome of our experiment, right? And we want to control those variables. So when the ex we do that experiment, we're going to be testing the hypothesis under controlled conditions, right? And in those conditions, we only want to adjust one variable or change one variable. That variable is what we call the independent variable, okay? So let's say we're going to grow plants and we want to test um, nitrogen and how nitrogen affects plant growth. Um, that would be the one variable that we would affect. So that nitrogen, we would say, is the variable that we change. Some plants might just get water. They're what we call the control group. Uh, the experimental group is the group that's going to be getting you know, the nitrogen fertilizer. And then we're going to compare that independent variable group, that treatment group, to the control group. But the nitrogen is, in this case, the independent variable. Some of the other variables that could affect plant growth, like temperature, amount of water, humidity, amount of light, uh, those variables we don't want changed in our experiment because they also affect plant growth. So those variables we're going to call constants. Constants are variables that are kept the same in the experiment. So we only want to isolate and change one variable. Otherwise, we don't really know what caused any differences in the plant growth if we didn't control all of those other variables. Okay, And the dependent variable in our experiment is the results. So a lot of people confuse independent variable, dependent variable. Remember the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. If your hypothesis is correct, then that nitrogen, that nutrient, should affect the plant growth. Right? It will depend on whether or not those plants got the nitrogen in terms of how much they grew. So the dependent variable is the change that results from the change in the independent variable. Also, we want to have that group that does not receive the independent variable, and that group is not the experimental group. That group is a group we call the control. So the control is what we can compare our treatment group to. And so we have subjects that do not receive the independent variable we call the control or the control group. 
Okay, and we, if we don't have that group to compare it to, we don't know whether the nitrogen made the plants grow, or maybe the plants just grew because they were in a nice sunny environment and we watered them and gave them everything they needed, right? You've got to have something to compare the independent variable to, and that is what we call the control. Oftentimes it's just water, or with people we'll give them a sugar pill, a placebo, which doesn't have any active ingredient, but just by someone giving you something to say, hey, take this, is it going to affect your you know, cold or your, your headache? Um, you can compare that. Okay, now I want to talk about theories. And there's a, a little illustration here of the ideas or some of the confusion between scientific theories and sort of common term theory that you may use. Sometimes we use theory to mean like an idea, like I have a theory why they're not signing Drew Brees, or why I have a theory why they suspended Sean Payton for a year instead of just for six games. Um, those are just kind of your ideas, right? When we talk about scientific theories, we're talking about something that has been tested and supported again and again using different observations and experiments, right? So for example, alchemy versus chemistry. Chemistry has actually been tested. We've tested the, the theories in chemistry and they've been supported. Alchemy, the, the idea that you could make gold out of other substances, has never actually been supported, right? Or pharaonology, which is looking at all the bumps on your head to determine, you know, what kind of person or personality you might have, versus ne neurology. Neurology is actually a science that's been supported. The ideas in neurology have been supported. Pharaonology, these, this idea of bumps on the heads, never really been supported by scientists. So important to separate scientific theories versus this common use of the word theory, whereas I just have an idea about something. And that's that's important distinction. Now I want to talk about the two different types of data we're going to collect in biology class this year. The first is qualitative data. And in, you can see in qualitative data, the word quality is in there. And this is, when we say quality, this is descriptive data, the color, the smell. So if I've got a plant and the leaves are turning yellow, that tells me something versus a plant that has nice dark green leaves, right? That yellow plant is probably not very healthy, right? Well, I can't graph or um, you know put that in a data table, but I do want to record that information. So oftentimes this is written description and it's what we call qualitative data, okay? Other data that is more sort of numerically based is called quantitative data, and you can see the word quantity is in there. So these, this is numerical data, right? So something that we might have in an Excel spreadsheet, something that we might use to measure seconds, meters, liters, density, rates, how much something is changing over time. These are quantitative data, right? And oftentimes we're going to graph this data and we're going to illustrate this data in a data table and, and it's easy to compare numerical data. So qualitative data, quantitative data, they're both important. We're going to use them both this year in science. And this is just a quick overview of some of the methods we're going to use to learn about uh, living things around us.